Hi, I'm Sharon, and welcome to episode 20 of the Sampler Style Floss Tube. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 20. So I promised you that I would be back sooner than I normally has been, have been back in the past year. So yeah, I'm going to try for an every two to three week timeline, and let's see how it goes. So I have been stitching pretty much daily and I have some progress to show you. I only have two projects to show you because I only worked on two projects in the past three weeks. So let's start with my new start and this is the Rose Bush Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery and I absolutely love this. I just have a small start on her, but um, yeah, it's really great. So here is my progress. So I always start in the upper left corner of the fabric and this looks really good so i changed the colors somewhat most of the color well i added some fancy floss um instead of the dmc a few colors some of it's the called for dmc but here are the flosses i finally got them on floss drops I love them. They're just very subtle. So I did this flower right here and for the inside of the flower you can probably see right here that it calls for a crew right here. Maybe you can't see it because it's pretty It's pretty subtle. So I decided I didn't really like that A crew. So I ripped out part of it and stitched it with color in cotton sampler peach right here where my finger is. And I love it. I love how that looks. So for some of the A crew, I'm going to, here's the A crew. I'm going to substitute the sampler peach which is what I, um, I stitched Winter Rose Manor House with this color. It's really, really pretty. So for some of the A crew, I'm substituting this sampler peach. And for some of the A crew, I'm just going to, like, um, the pots on the bottom are stitched in the A crew as well. And I'm not going to make them peach. I'm going to make them white but not this a crew white I'm gonna make make it like a bright white like this DMC regular white because I think this will show up much better than the a crew so yeah here's the, yeah that white's gonna show up much better This fabric is not dark enough to show a crew. It just blends right in, as you can see. So, yeah. So I'm kind of like doing substitutions as I go along. This vine right here was originally like a DMC color, and I substituted... I substituted Oscar for that color. Oscar is a color that Brenda Gervais uses quite a bit. And I thought it looked really nice for this vine. So I'm going to use that. And that's, pr oh, and then there is a flower in the middle that is kind of a gold color, but I wanted it more pink, so I 
I'm substituting. Well, we'll see how it goes when I put it in this wren, coloring cotton wren for that flower. So I pretty much can't wait to see how this is stitched up on a more modern looking fabric. Because the antique is, is just very, it's very faded and pretty, but um, yeah, I just want to see how it looks with the modern threads and everything. So I'm working on it when I can. I, there's a lot of things going on in my life right now. Things are, are fine, but you know, stuff happens and I'm dealing with a lot. <laughs> so... I don't have as much time to stitch as I would like, but that's, you know, that's how things go sometimes. We're planning a wedding. Erin, um, my beautiful child, is getting married in next summer. And I was actually visiting she and her fiancé over the weekend, last weekend. And I met the in-laws, the future in-laws. I love them. They were born the same year as me. I never meet people my age, ever. <laughs> so that was really, really cool that I got to meet people who were my age and we had a lot in common. That was really fun. And yeah, so that went well. And um, they're closing in on a venue. They have a tentative guest list. So yeah, it's a lot. As you all know, I'm sure if you've had weddings in the family, it's crazy. But I mean, this is a small wedding. It's not a big wedding. It's 40 people but still you know it's a party you got a plan and we're getting there <laughs> and um both brian's mom and i are like you guys do what you want you you plan everything out it doesn't matter wear what you want <laughs> have whatever food you want whatever theme you want you you do you. We're, we're good with that. So that's that's really fun. So I can't wait to show this next piece to you because I'm obsessed with it. I started this piece on my birthday, which is January 16th. It is now April 20th as I record today. And I am a little over halfway finished and wait till you see it, you guys. This is so beautiful. So I brought it to my daughter's house. She's a stitcher. Um, if you look at some of my past episodes, you will see some of her pieces. She finished Dark Queen of the Sea. It's stunning. She's now stitching Dark Queen of the World. I was going to stitch that and then I decided no. I, I'm not so great at stitching um, confetti, so I, I gave her my pattern for Dark Queen of the World. I gave her, I had them, some of the materials, I gave them to her, and she's stitching away. Okay, so this beautiful piece is Mary Morgan's by Fox and Rabbit, and I'm stitching it on 40 count murky by picture this plus and um with all the called for colors here they are i mean i've used all of them in the piece so you can see them all as i show it to you So, this center rose is just the masterpiece of this piece. Look at that flower. It's beautiful. It is so bright and gorgeous on this fabric. I'm in love with it. I love it so much. Here it is back here. 
colors are probably a little more accurate back here, but it's just beautiful. So, I want to thank you all for your comments on my last video. You seem to really enjoy that video, and I really appreciate all your comments. And I'm going to answer some questions um, that were asked of me, and one of them has to do with something I'm going to modify in this sampler. So, Julie, hi Julie, you eliminate words on your samplers as well. <laughs> If I don't like the wording on a sampler, I'm going to take it out, maybe put something else in it, um, or redo the wording a little bit. I'm just not a big fan of quotes on my walls or a lot of words on my walls. It's just not my thing. And I'm getting more and more um, adverse to it as I, as I go on as a stitcher. So... Um, Julie says that alphabets are okay, and I, and I completely agree. So this sampler has a cartouche here under this rose. And I don't really love the look of the cartouche. And the words are written in Welsh which is fine because I won't, wouldn't be able to read them and whatever. But I just, I'm just not crazy about the look of that. So what I th think I am going to do, because I don't like words, <laughs> I am just going to put numbers. Not like crazy circusy looking numbers like these, but just like regular numbers. And I'm going to put a number line where the cartouche is supposed to be. It won't have to be one over one. I don't think the cartouche is one over one. I th I'm sure I'll, I'll make them fit. It'll fit. I'm pretty sure it will. If it doesn't, I'll figure something out. But um, I'm not putting in that Welsh saying at all. I'm going to put in numbers, colorful ones. And I think that would be beautiful. Um, someone had finished this with... I'm sorry, I don't know your name. You're you're famous on Instagram. <laughs> if you watch this, put a comment down below. Um, she had put a quote about color in, and it's a really cool quote, and I love it, and I could copy it, but like I said, I just don't want words on my wall. So it's going to be numbers, and that's very exciting. So, um, yeah, so that's it. That's all I've been stitching. Let me answer a few other comments or comment on your comments right here because I, I find that interesting. So I was asked a question by Vicki. Hi, Vicki, about what size needle I use on Picture This Plus fabric because um, Picture This Plus fabric tends to be a tighter weave because of, probably because of their dyeing process. I would agree with you there, Vicki. Honestly, when I was measuring this out and I measure things 10 times before I start them. I do math, I measure, I wanna make sure my stuff fits. And I was a little tight here with my margins. I have a, about a two inch on this side. I usually prefer a three inch, maybe it's two and a half. So according to my calculations, this piece of fabric should have two and a half inch margins on each side. I think I'm going to have a lot more room on this side because I think this weave is much tighter than a 40 count. Um, I will do the math when I'm finished, when I get over here and let you guys know. We'll see. Maybe it is just a 40 count. I don't know. I think it's more like a 44, 45. Um, it's, it's tight. It's definitely tight. And I don't mind that. It's fine. But I agree with you, I, I definitely need the appropriate needle. Use the correct tools for your job, <laughs> for sure. So my favorite needles are the same needles that 
Brenda Sampler Stitcher uses, and those are Peacemakers. So I use exclusively Peacemaker 28s for 40 count and 36 count. So for the uh, larger counts, or the smaller counts, like 28, 32, I would use a size 26. I haven't used these yet. I use Bowen 26s for, um, for the larger count fabric, like 28 and 32. But I ordered these Peacemakers, I just haven't tried them yet. If I pick up Dark Queen of the Sea this summer, I'll try these size 26 peacemakers. Um, you cannot fit two strands of floss in a 28 peacemaker. At least I can't. <laughs> two, str two strands of DMC. So that's why I don't use this if I have to use two strands stitching. I, I I'm pretty much only stitching with one strand nowadays, so these are great. Um, I will let you know when I use these size 26 peacemakers if the two strands fit through the eye. I did not have good luck with these, but I love them. They're a little bit... The 28s are a little bit shorter than the Bowen 28s, and that's why I like these. I find them easier for fine hand coordination. I find them easier to manipulate for the way I stitch. I'm a two-handed stitcher. So I poke down with my right. I think I poke down with my right and up with my left. I don't know. I don't. If you want a video of how I stitch, put a comment down below and I'll record one next time but the way I stitch I like the way I can manipulate the shorter needle with my fingers if that makes any sense so yeah okay another question let's see I answered those um, so Elizabeth hi Elizabeth um, in talking about software that I use for stitching, Elizabeth said that she has been importing her PDFs into iBooks, which is Apple's book app on the iPad and the iPhone. And um, I, I, I'm a diehard Apple fangirl. Like, it's bad. I have, I have all the things. <laughs> But I have never used iBooks. So Elizabeth said it works well for her. So awesome, Elizabeth. Thank you for the suggestion. I might check that out on iBooks. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to show you is the rest of my kits, my sampler kits. And some of these won't be started this year. Some, I don't know. We'll have to see. Whatever my mood strikes me. I've just been stitching whatever I'm in the mood to stitch. You know, I have limited time, and Mary Morgan's is definitely calling to me like there's no tomorrow, so. So I talked last week about, I showed you this last week. This is Sarah Ann Fernley, and, um by just stitching along and Krista who is the designer commented thank you Krista for commenting on my floss tube and she was saying oh she was so happy to see that I had purchased this and um, told me to enjoy the stitch and I was like yes I can't wait to start this I would like to start it this year and someone else um, a free spirit commented that these words at the bottom are over one about the zodiac and I was stitching it on 40 I was gonna stitch it on 40 count sand so thank you for pointing that out to me I would have figured that out <laughs> as I was stitching but um, 
I've decided to substitute 36 count sand. And Krista, I found out that you have an Etsy shop and you have this in PDF and I'm probably going to be downloading that in, in PDF <laughs> so I don't have to scan it. So, yeah, that one is definitely up there. Okay, so kits. I can't remember if I showed you this, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to show it to you again if I showed it to you last time. <laughs> So, this is Sarah Jackson by The Scarlet House. It's really beautiful. And I have, I did, I think, I know I did, I showed you this. I have a piece of fox and rabbit eucalyptus and all, some silk, a silk conversion from the attic. That's ready to go. I love this chart because um, I love the color of the fabric. So, speaking of black samplers, I have this beautiful chart. Anne Grimshaw by The Scarlet Letter. And this one, I have a ton of a ton. I have a bunch of 40 count that I could put on this. Just a nice neutral. And I have a lot of black floss. <laughs> I have a whole hank, giant hank of NPI for this. So I have that put in a different location. Alright, this next one. I've been wanting to stitch this ever since I started stitching. I have it kitted with the silk and it has words and I haven't decided what to do with the words so pro this is probably why I haven't started this one but this is Seven Sheep Sampler by the Scarlet House I know that Emily C. Eclectic Possessions has this charted for a song by, I'm not sure, Grateful Dead maybe? I'm not really sure. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of words here. I could probably put alphabets because there's no other alphabets on this chart. I could put, maybe I'll put an alphabet in numbers. I think that's what I'm going to do. If I can chart it that, if I can, I mean, this is a lot of words. I could, I could probably fit alphabets and numbers. Yeah. That's probably what I'll do. And this is all the beautiful Gloriana silk. I need to start this because it's just, it's gorgeous. I hear that the border is very tricky. And I'm not a big fan of border stitching. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to like stitching that border. But I love the piece. Oh, and that's, that's the other reason. I don't really have appropriate floss for this one. Because I want to do it on a darker color. And I have to look in my 40 count stash. I don't think I have anything big enough. Because I'm going to need a fat half of this one. That's another reason why I haven't started it. What I should do is go up to my local needle workshop, which is about a 40 minute drive from me and see if she has anything. Cause she has an extensive back room full of fabric. And she has a lot of picture this plus, which I love. So I'll have to see. Okay, so this is Teresa Kogut. I don't think I've ever shown this before. This is her Newcastle Bouquet Biscornu. 
I have everything ready to go. The fabric. I'll probably use sand. I'll probably use that 40 count sand on, on this. It calls for picture this plus doubloon, which is very, very gold. And not the picture is not showing that. And I don't know. I, I think it'd look good on sand. We'll see. I'm not in any rush to start that. It's a lot of intense stitching. Um, but I love it. I love Teresa Kogut. She has beautiful, beautiful patterns. Okay. This is Autumn Pin Drum by Kathy Barrick. I've never stitched anything by Kathy Barrick. And I would love to. It's really, really pretty. Look at that owl and the, that's really nice. And I bought this from Treehouse Fiber Arts. That's um, LFA Linens in Boston Tea Party. Let me take it out of the package. It's very pretty. Sue is such a talented dyer. Hi, Sue, if you're watching. She always bothers, bugs me if I, if I haven't recorded in a while. She's like, are you going to record? Because I want to see what you've been stitching. Anyway. Boston Tea Party, beautiful. And the flosses, I have all the flosses because it came kitted. And I have them all ready. This is one of the ones that I got ready while I couldn't stitch when it had hand surgery. So pretty. And you may ask, are you going to finish that yourself? Into, oh, and it comes with like all the finishing things. You may ask, will you be finishing that? And I will tell you, absolutely not. I will be sending that out. I have a very, very deep respect for those of you who are so detail-oriented that you are good finishers. I know even if I tried to finish stuff, I wouldn't be good at it. It would take me a long time to get good at it, and I am not getting any younger, so I would rather just <laughs> stitch and send my stuff out. Okay, so this kit, I'm going to have to put the pattern, the chart up here. It's Modern Folk Embroidery. I don't know the name of it, but it's, I think it was the 2020, the 2020 year-long stitch-along. I have this beautiful piece of Winter White by Seraphim. Just this beautiful warm white. And I have this gorgeous blue NPI. I might switch out the fabric though and use a cooler toned white. I haven't decided. But it's a it's be I just fell in love with this pattern. It was one of the first things I ever really noticed when I was watching floss tubes. Um, was that pattern and I just was mesmerized by it. I I just love it. So, at some point, this one, I definitely would like to start this, maybe not this year, but maybe next year, maybe it'll be my New Year's start, because this is, maybe I'll do this one for my birthday, or New Year's, and just stitch it till it's done. Manor at Quaker Hill by Brenda Gervais. I fell in love with this. It's all set to go. I have 
all the called for flosses. I got this at my local needle shop. She had them all. And this is the called for fabric, which is a piece of 36 count legacy by Picture This Plus. I like 36 count. That's fine. So, yeah. This one is on my would like to start soon list. I thought I would start it this spring because it's such a springy pattern. But I'm up to my eyeballs with Mary Morgan's, so nothing is going to get started <laughs> until she's done. So... For those of you who are new here, I really only started stitching in 2020, so I've been curating my stash since then. Okay, this one, I fell in love with this. This is um, Kitten Stitcher, Shakespeare's Puddler, Hannah Carter. 1838 and it is just a sweet little black marking sampler and I love that and I have her kitted with because I wanted it to look kind of primitive so I have her kitted with some weeks blackboard And this picture, this plus ancient fabric, which is this beautiful, warm, modeled fabric. So, I mean, it's it's a primitive looking pattern, so I wanted a primitive looking fabric to go with it. And I think it's going to be really pretty. And I just haven't gotten around to starting her yet. But I will. Not adding a lot to my stash uh, this year. As a matter of fact, I have no haul for you. Because um, I'm just not. I'm, I'm going to stitch. I'm going to try to stitch what I have. This one, this I had been wanting to start. I show it to you like every, <laughs> show it to you a couple times. This is, and I know that there's a PDF of this. I'm probably going to get it. I think Kitten Stitcher said she had it. So this is Gilles Leger, 1898 by Reflet de Soie. And it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. And I have it kitted with a very different fabric. Because this looks blue to me. And so I have it like on a bluish. This is Picture This Plus. I'm not sure. It's not labeled. Um, and then I have all the silks. That came like this. It came on these. Really. this I got this kit. Like kind of before I. Really. Was much of a ser serious stitcher. But. I love this palette. It's beautiful. And like I said, I will be starting this at some point when the mood strikes me. Because I love stitching in silk. Right now I'm not stitching in silk. I mean, I have my Plum Street 
samplers, Halloween, uh, Ghoul Tide Welcome. I'm stitching that in silk, but I haven't, I didn't touch that this month because I was too focused on that. <laughs> okay, I have this beautiful sampler. The Mary Ann Aldridge Sampler by Needlework Press. This was... I'm not going to open it because it's kitted. Look at those beautiful colors. This was like a Facebook... I mean... I am not a Facebook user. I have a Facebook from my business, which I really don't use. Um, I am more of an Instagram person. So, but I did see this on, I probably saw it on Instagram and then ordered it, but look how beautiful that is. It has a quote, to do to others as I would that they should do to me will make me honest, kind, and good as children ought to be. Marianne Aldred, aged 11 years. I don't mind this quote too much. I might leave it in. If I can chart it maybe with alphabets, I might. I'll see. But it's really pretty. I am not much of a Christmas stitcher, as you may have figured out. <laughs> Um, I do have this one that I'll do at some point. I got this one at my local needle shop. This is Reindeer Games by Kathy Barrick. It's small, so that's cool. I usually, I might start this maybe in December because I like to do a small in December. And it looks really fun. And I have all the flosses. So... Actually, interesting. It's charted here. I didn't even know that it's charted here with NPI because Kathy likes to stitch with NPI. So, so I do too. And I may have some of these colors because I'm in um, the NPI club with Fat Quarter Shop, and I love that club. So I may have a lot of these, and I'll just substitute them. I have this. Now, I know I do not have flosses in with this one, but I do have fabric. And I love this. This is 36 count. Let me check it out. Um, I know in my stash I have plenty of floss that I can use for this. Either NPI or Color and Cotton, because I was in both of, I'm not in Color and Cotton Club anymore, but I have a lot of their floss. Look at this fabric. Ooh. This is another one. Entwined Hearts by Scarlet House. I just fell in love with this fabric. 36 count dried prom rose. I think I think this is from Kitten Stitcher, and I think it's Xju Designs. Maybe doesn't doesn't say, but I think it's Xju. And it's beautiful. This will be really really pretty. Another one that I just love the different tone of the fabric, which is um, why I would. Love to stitch this someday. And it'll be fun picking out the colors. I have no problem substituting colors. Let me look at this. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I actually really enjoy changing colors and picking my own colors. This only calls for four colors. And they're very basic. It's like a black, a kind of a 
mossy green and like a tan two like two kinds of tans yeah maybe I'll brighten them up I don't know we'll see you need something kind of neutral for this fabric though And this one is partially kitted. This is Raven Bewitched by Blackbird Designs. And I have a ton of fabric that I could put this on because I have a lot of neutral fabrics. And I have some of the flosses. When I was kitting this up, flosses were a little scarce. It's better now. Um, so I could probably find the rest of them. This is a really cool fall pattern. And I've seen it stitched and it looks a lot nicer stitched than it does in this photograph. It's really, really neat. So. I mean, I have some other books and you know, the usual suspects that people have. Um, I will look in my other box next time. I know I have one more kit that I've decided not to stitch. I might stitch parts of it, but um, I might show you that next time. So, it's actually getting kind of late, and I have another show to record for my knitting channel. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this program. Let me know if you would like to see a little video of me stitching, where I stitch, um, the materials I've used. I've gone over it a little bit in past episodes, but I would be happy to do a little demo for you. So leave a comment down below if you want to see that. And leave a comment about anything you would like to. And um, if it's something I feel like I want to talk about here, I will talk about it like I did today. I hope you all have a good few weeks. And I will be back before you know it. Stitch something beautiful. And cheers. <laughs>